The Summer Movie Wager 2015. For those of you who are unfamiliar, this contest is popularized through the website timetravelreviews.com. It has been utilized by, or the rules have been used by the Totally Rad Show and by Slash Film and by whoever else. And now we are going to adapt this into our own little contest. A friendly contest. Friendly so far. I feel like if I win, I'm willing to apply consequences to those who don't win. Oh, We haven't even talked about consequences. Yeah. Okay. So if I don't win, there's no consequences. (laughs) So what is the summer movie wager? Well, we are going to be speculating as to what will be the top 10 grossing movies of the summer and in what order. Now, the summer is defined as the first full weekend in May. So in it, this year, it's Friday, May 1st is the opening date until Labor Day, which is September 7th. That's a Monday, I believe, or the end of Labor Day weekend, I should say. Scoring. We will rank the top 10 films or as we see them to to happen. In the order, if we get a pick exactly correct, that is worth 10 points. If we get a pick that is off by one spot, that is 7 points. If it's off by two spots, that's 5 points. And if a pick appears somewhere in the top 10, not within two, then that'll be worth 3 points. In addition, there will be three dark, dark Horses, which are movies that we're not exactly sure if they'll make the top 10. We think they might make the top 10. And those are ranked from one to three. If the first one appears in the top 10, it is worth three points. If the second one appears in the top 10, it's worth two points. And the last one is worth one point. So without further ado, I hope I got that right. Without further ado, number one, the number one movie, what we expect to be the number one grossing movie of summer 2015. Start us off, Judd. Uh, I assume we all have Age of Ultron as number one. I do. It's a no-brainer. I picked the Avengers. Okay. Avengers Age of Ultron. I apologize. (laughs) It's the... That's the same movie. I'm sorry. Avengers (laughs) colon Age of Ultron. Yeah. uh, I feel really dumb right now. (laughs) We did pick the same movie. The theme for this whole summer is, like it's been the last few summers, is uh, sequels. And this is the sequel of all sequels. There's a lot of sequels this year. Yeah. This is the sequel to... Eight movies plus the, the original Avengers, so mm-hmm. uh, it has the most going for it. The Avengers, the whole Disney Marvel franchise has been making the most money, so I feel like it's a no-brainer. Avengers has done very well, or at least the first one did, I mean. And then all the individual Avengers movies have done pretty well. And so, yeah, it seems to me like this is no contest. I it's also opening on the very first day of summer. This movie is built to yeah. make money. I wouldn't need be- to destroy these summer lists. It's yeah. the purpose yeah. of the movie. The entire marketing apparatus around it, where they release a bunch of Marvel series and movies that are just good enough to make you want to go see the next Avengers movie, that's all based around this bet. Yeah, I uh, I do. I would not be surprised if this makes less money than the original. Um, what? It's not like a lot of data, but like, for example, the Star Wars, the second one, made less money than the first. What right. you, you're saying, episode two or episode five? Episode, episode five. Episode five made yeah. less money because it's this is, looks like it's going to have a darker twist to it. Like this is going to be one where everything goes bad. And so then, mm-hmm. I took a look back in time as I was preparing for this because I wanted to be educated about this. I really don't, as practice, pay attention to box office returns. Right. When you're looking at 1980 was the second, thereabouts. Mm-hmm. Was uh, Return of the uh, Return of the Empire Strikes Back? Right. Man, I'm good at this. Um, back then, when you were looking at your top ten, they were mostly original properties. They were mostly new movies. Right so now, if you go back over the last five years, it's all sequels. Fifty-two percent were sequels. Fourteen percent were reboots. Yeah. So like, makes sounds about right. Yeah. yeah. No, I and then adaptations after that. So. I just Sequels don't feel like this one's works. going to be the celebration that the first one was, and like that's I've, definitely true. Yeah. And I do feel that the way people rate a were movie, the Avengers a franchise people were waiting on. Like I, yes. honestly, the Avengers I thought were. Uh, you remember there was the British Avengers yeah, as well, we like in the late movie. '90s with Ralph Fiennes or somebody. Yeah. I thought that, that's all I knew of the Avengers. I had no idea that this yeah. team existed. No, I people were anticipating this, and uh, the way I do. Solely feel the way you walk out of a theater is the way the feeling you have at the end of a movie is the way that you it judges how you feel. Like, for example, 
where they go to Las Vegas and for, like at the end they had all the pictures, the comedy. Hangover? Talk about the hangover. The hangover. Yeah. I think the hangover is okay. And then the pictures at the end make people think it's amazing. Like I stand by that. No, nah, I think that first one was, it like was a good thing. filthy comedy. <laughs> I mean, I'm, yeah, I do appreciate those type of comedies, but I didn't think that one was particularly great. Mm-hmm. But um, no, I, I could see Age of Ultron dipping a little bit. Like not, it's going to make a lot of money, but I'm saying compared to the first yeah. one, I, th- I can see it going down. It's going to be the top grossing movie of the year. Right. Not just the summer. Right, but I can see it being less than the original. Okay. Yeah, I, I can see that happening too. It's not far fetched. Mm-hmm. How much did the first one make off the top of your head? Seven hundred million and change. <laughs> right. I'm saying domestic box. Yeah, office. domestic. See, I I keep. All right, not important. Yeah. It's gonna make all, less By the way, that. we are going by domestic, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. We're going by domestic because we don't want to have to factor in staggered release dates. Right. That's yeah. just. It, it, be, it begins to get very complicated at that yeah. point. I mean, typically, it all like I was thinking about it, and if you just multiply it domestic by three for big movies, mm-hmm. that's your worldwide. So yeah, roughly. So you're you're basically doing the same thing. Yeah, either. eventually it'll it'll stabilize. Right. Okay, but for the for the case of having an end date like this, we want to be more solid. Right. Right. You know, now that I think about it, the first Avengers might have been global box office in the seven hundred millions and. The 250 ballpark for America. No, it made uh, it made a lot more than that. We can go on. I'll I'll get some stuff on it. Okay. Well, all of us have Avengers number one. Let's go to number two. Alex, this is where I'm assuming we'll start to separate. Yeah. Oh, immediately. Yeah. I chose Minions as my number hmm. two entry, and that could be risky, but it brought us the most popular merchandise. From the Despicable Me series, right? If you walk around town anywhere, you're going to see not only kids with Minions stuff, but you'll see adults in Minion t-shirts, right? Totally. So when I when I look at it, Avengers is going to kill because it mm-hmm. was it was ordained. The gods of cinema have told us Avengers is just going to murder everyone else. The next thing I saw looking at the list, Minions has going for it. It's a sequel, which we love to see sequels. Right. It's it is a toy line already established. Like kids already want minions now. So of course they want to go see it when Nickelodeon is alternating minion toys and minion movie <laughs> yeah. shows. You know what I mean? Dead Ringer. I also have minions as my number two. Do you really? Yep. Get out of my head. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> same That's, reasons. I mean, exact same reason you said before. It's a the I feel like the what's the selling point for the first two for the kids side is the minions. And the adults get some of the adult humor that it's sprinkled through, but no. Well, the, the minions have adult jokes too. So well, and adults aren't wearing clothes of any other character from the Despicable right. Me other franchise. Than the yeah. No, I think yeah, I have minions number two. It's I my two through five are all actually like I could have put them in any order. But, I mean, uh, my two through ten are that way. My yeah. ten, my two through dark horses, you could have put no, them in I have, any order. Man. I feel like there's a definite line between my top five and my bottoms. Five, which was helped me out for making my order. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, I don't have minions. No. No. I have, which could be very bad. We'll see. <laughs> uh, I have Jurassic World. Oh, okay. I ah. think Jurassic World is going to do very well. I I do agree. I do agree. Jurassic well, you don't World get to be good. number two, and that's fair because in my research for this, I looked back at past years, and movies like Minions can go anywhere. Like, they can be number two or mm. number ten. That's true. There are only two big family movies coming out this summer, though. So you've got Minions uh, and you've got Inside Out. You, Yeah. I mean, if you want to up the age group a little bit, you have to add Tomorrowland and Pan. That's true. I mm. think those are catering toward different audiences. Yes. And Pan, because I hadn't seen any promotional anything for it, I don't. I feel like the big blockbusters get widely promoted before they're coming mm-hmm. Well, Pan is late July, I believe. It's it's a little and bit, bit later on. Yeah, well, yeah. So that's another thing to factor in is release date. That's going to have a factor on how much these movies take. <clears> in. Do you think that yeah. the you're not worried that it's been like 15 years since the last Jurassic anything came out? Like, so here's what has me sold on Jurassic World. Not as number two. It's number three on my list. So now I've already jumped to the next entry. I'm <laughs> yeah. sorry. Yeah. But it's your fault. You said it. Jurassic World is directed by the director of Safety Not Guaranteed. And that was that's mm-hmm. that director's, I think, only other widely released film. 
And the cool thing about that, did you get? Did you guys watch Safety Not Guaranteed? Yes, I saw it. It's. Did you check it? it it's got a. Now I can't remember her name. The indie actress, I think her Audrey Plaza from the Community or from Community or whatever. Yeah, Aubrey Plaza. Mm -hmm. Um. Anyway, what what I think about it is the the since the director of that move movie had worked on a small project where he had to rely on his cast his crew and his skills and then he wound up turning out a kick-ass movie instead of taking jerry bruckheimer i'm assuming he was busy yeah so they were they you know they were out of big name directors and they said you i don't remember the guy's name you made something weird come make us a jurassic park movie there's a scene in the trailer where she has the flare and the doors are opening. It reminds me so much of an alien type scene. Mm. And I like it's very hard for me. Like, it'd be very interesting if that's the direction this goes. Like, this is like, because one, like, we got the impression it's one dinosaur that's the bad dinosaur and the rest of it's yeah. somewhat domesticated. So if it goes that direction, it would be because, I mean, Jurassic, we, we watched Jurassic Park as kids in theaters, right? Yeah. Yeah. I uh, actually, when the Dilophosaurus spit in the guy's face, like once that, when Nedry was his name, yeah. when he died, uh, when I was a kid and saw it in the theater, I actually had to go to the bathroom at that point. I was too <laughs> so I went too pee much. and came yeah, back. Um, so, yeah, I'll, I'll be interested if they can, this movie can capture the kids like the other ones did. Well, it already has the adults. Right. Because yeah. to take a look at uh, Ninja Turtles. That just came out. Oh God! How I know. how did that do? I don't. I didn't look. I know my dumb ass. Went it did pretty well it. though, right? Yeah, uh, I think it, and it was not a good movie. Yeah. All it Turtles needed was the name. Was the ninth ranked summer blockbuster of 2014. Oh, okay, it finished in the top ten. Well, that's good year. to know because we have and the original movies were quite a while ago. Yeah, they were right. God, Twenty plus. Yeah, years and before. they weren't even that good. Uh, <laughs> so we're talking about Jurassic Park. Now. Worldwide, it made half a billion. Ninja Turtles? Yep. Okay. Turts? Yep. Yeah, that's too much, if you ask me. Yeah. God, more, dude, That's more than the movie deserved. You know, it was, they they saw Transformers, and they said, yeah. we can, we yeah, can. Yeah, we can do it. There are other toy lines out there. Yeah. We don't have to stick to And Transformers Turtles. actually won last year, right? It, it was number one grossing. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, right. right. I forgot about that Transformers one. was That was number last. two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it still it did extremely well. Yeah. Guardians of the Galaxy, also great for toys. So very true. Only fitting that you would put minions at number two, I suppose. I do yeah. want a dancing group plant, but I mean, yeah. at this point, the minions are look. They made a movie about these toys you love, kids, mm -hmm. and that's yeah, Sharon's love them some mm -hmm. merchandise. Right. Okay, so minions number two, it, or Jurassic Park or Jurassic World yeah. number three. For my number three, I have Ant Man. Ant Man. <laughs> I'm kind of weary putting it there, but I do feel like Guardians of the Galaxy has shown that. They people are willing to see a new IP or a new property and put it at their number one right. movie. And um, the technology was right to reboot Honey I Shrunk the Kids ten years ago. Yeah. So why yeah, so this is now? way overdue. Yeah. It would be interesting how they do Ant Man because he can be a very, very like the Doctor Pym is like a dark character and then the I don't know much is about Doctor Pym the bad guy? Doctor Pym is Ant Man. Oh. And he's actually the person who not in this series, but in the comic books, makes Ultron. But they're making it so uh, Iron Man makes Ultron for this. But um, but Doctor Pym. So this is Doctor Pym, the guy who went to go steal Doctor Pym's stuff, and he becomes Ant Man, which gives a little bit more comic relief type scenarios. Uh, I don't know. I just think that people are going to be after Age of Ultron. People are going to want to see the next Marvel movie that comes out, no matter what it is, and this will be. You know, like there'll be answers that'll be giving in the age of, in Ant Man. I'm sure that's their thought too. Yeah. Yeah. So I I do see Ant Man, although it did have at, some... at the end of Avengers, you're expecting an Ant Man. Ant -Man right. Thing, nah, right? they yeah. seem to promo things for farther out in the future than that, don't they? I uh, expect to see Black Panther or something. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but no, I think yeah, Ant Man's. A, like I said, my one, my two through five are kind of all wishy washy, but I, I'm gonna stick with Ant Man, my number three. Okay. And Alex, you already mentioned your number three. Is that right? Jurassic World? That's right. Okay. My number three, uh, you can call this a long shot, I suppose, but I put Mad Max Fury, Fury Road. Really? Because I think this is going to be the darling of the summer. Do you it's think coming it will? Out, huh? 
I want it to be. Yeah, it's coming out two weeks after the Avengers, so it has plenty of time to build momentum. Right. And the question is, is this going to be a good movie? If it's a good movie, it will draw an audience. Now, this is not rated R, I hope. It is R. It no. is. I have now confirmed <laughs> that. <laughs> Number three is definitely too high, then. Yeah, I was yeah. like... All right, well... <laughs> that's two, why I didn't... 2011 okay. was the last year an R-rated movie broke yeah. into the top ten. Mm. And uh, it was a sequel... Which is now, it's so weird to think now that being a sequel is an advantage for box office. Okay. What was the 2011 movie? Uh, the Hangover 2. Oh, okay. All right, so never mind. That's not going to be number three. <laughs> However, <laughs> I do think it'll be top ten, so I'll take that. Yeah, I, I think it'll be one of, I, I hope now that I've seen it's got an R rating coming, that it'll probably be one of the better summer movies. I think that this will be the biggest surprise of the summer. Yeah, I really hope so. I mean, if you hit it dead on, then you're a genius. You should just no. stick with your guns. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Calling it here. Yeah, it's right here. No. Um, no, I I can see this going top ten then. Yeah. yeah. Uh, right. Well, we'll see what happens there. However, everything I've heard about this movie says that it's very good. Right. You said Tom Hardy signed on for three more. Yeah. So did he really? So Mad Max Two, we can expect to be in the top ten. Right now, I don't know. Yeah. It's it's a re- well, it's a reboot. Eh, it's a reboot. It's a reboot. Yeah. It is a reboot. The rated R thing hurts it. Okay. Uh, I've only heard great, not not just good things, but great things about this movie. Hmm. And so I have hope for it. I, I think it'll build steam, build momentum. Has it been screened already now? Like, is it complete and people have seen I don't, it through uh, I don't know that it's gone to any public screenings. And by public, I mean not film, not filmmakers. But like as far as from studio executives like they moved the release date of this movie to make it fall on a highly grossing part of the year did they yes if it's that gives me so much hope i've been anticipating a watershed moment for rated r movies making money and if this movie is that good maybe it will be the one that says yeah we can watch violence we're cool with that i can see this going top 10 yeah i still feel like um well i guess not that young i was gonna say i still feel like the major box office spenders are teenagers but then i think 17 yeah. oh you can get into a radar yeah. movie yeah yeah yeah, yeah good point. <laughs> i mean as far as i know they all have friends that work at the theater anyway yeah i know i can get into a rated r movie whatever yeah. they don't even card me all the time yeah right uh number four i have minions we've already okay. discussed that so alex continue with your number four ah i only now noticed that i did this fantastic four Ah. Is my number four. Okay. And the, m- my justification for putting Fantastic Four at number four is Judd's justification for Ant-Man at number three, except that I think Fantastic Four is one, it has going against it that the first, that the previous two Fantastic Four movies were not well received. But as I understand it, comic book fans love the Fantastic Four. And I have seen more people walking around town wearing t-shirts with a four on them than I have with T-shirts with, does that man have a logo or an emblem? I don't know. I haven't seen him though. His helmet is somewhat of an okay. emblem. So that's that's one thing. And it's it's become mainstream for grown-ups to wear superhero T-shirts now. The Captain America shield one is a doozy. Like, what do you do if you run into someone wearing it? Mm-hmm. I guess if you rock Ant-Man, you're probably safe. I was wearing the Captain America shirt earlier today. So yeah. And then you bumped into another dude wearing it. <laughs> yeah. I'm so glad I left. We high fived and put our <laughs> visors on the yeah. upside down. Yeah. yeah. Um Wow. That's interesting. I actually don't have that movie in my top ten. You know, it's its release date <laughs> is August. It's pretty late. Yeah. yeah. I'm taking a huge gamble. It's coming out in August. And I don't I don't know how much pull Fantastic Four really has. I think that Fantastic Four, I mean, other than the fact that it has less time on screen than Ant Man by about a month, I think that Fantastic Four I'm I'm guessing this based on nothing other than the fact that the other two Fantastic Four movies when they were released did break into the top ten, but wow. I don't I didn't look at what week they were released. Um, I purposely put Fantastic Four as my number four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> I think I intentionally accidentally did it. Yeah, and then um, the other thing is Marvel's actually canceled Fantastic Four comics and kind of a uh, because they want the franchise back because Johnny Johnny Storm. For what it's worth, he's the Human Torch, yeah. right? He his ethnicity has changed yeah. for this series, and I think that in itself also will at least bring more publicity to it. Right. Fox News will be against it, saying yeah. why 
Mm -hmm. Fantastic Four is bad. Well, but. yeah, Marvel, Disney, Marvel wants this to fail so they can get the franchise back. So, is this a like Sony or Paramount or somebody? Uh, is it Fox? I can't remember. Whoever owns it, like like Marvel, Disney has canceled making fa fa Fantastic Four comic books in preparation for this movie coming out. Really? Yeah. I mean, it looks to me. This one actually looks like a superhero movie I'm kind of interested in seeing as well. I have no stake. It has in the Fantastic kid from Whip Four. Whiplash in it. So oh. uh, there I, you go. I, so hot right now. Yeah, he's so hot yeah. right now. I still didn't see Whiplash. Yeah, I haven't seen it. I'm a well, I haven't heathen. Seen it <laughs> but yeah, I yeah I agree <clears> with you. I think I think the only thing that will hurt it is the fact that it's coming out later. I I would have actually put it above Ant Man. I think it's going to be a pretty big deal. Yeah. Well, my list is shockingly different from yours. Apparently, uh, let's make it more different. Okay. How about that? Because th this one is also a little bit of a long shot. I don't, I don't think it's that much of a long shot. But number five, I put Mission Impossible. Five. Oh. <laughs> what do you put? It four. Four was Minions. Oh, dirt. Yeah. Sorry. So Mission yeah. Impossible five at five. Yay. So we is that Mission Impossible five? At yeah. One two three. Ghost Protocol. Rogue Nation. E Mission Impossible. Rogue Nation. Yeah. And this year, Ghost Protocol was the last. Ghost Protocol. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, was the highest grossing of the Mission Impossibles. Yes. yes. And it was, I really enjoyed it. And this one has Tom Cruise and Jeremy Renner. I wasn't the, aware of that. The previous one had what? Jeremy Renner. Yeah, but I'm saying Tom Cruise and Jeremy Renner. No, no both the, of them had. The Bourne oh, I, movie. I thought Tom Cruise wasn't in the last one. Yeah, no, 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 he that was. was Bourne. Oh, I never yeah, saw it. Yeah, yeah. I, I actually don't like Mission Impossible. So, oh, okay. To I, be honest. The, um, the fourth, the Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol, I watched in a social situation. Yeah. That might have enhanced it, but... uh. Okay. I watched it at someone else's choosing and was very pleased with it. The first one was good. I don't. I didn't yeah. care for number two I or have, number three. I did not see number four. I haven't seen three or four. Four was good. I saw one and enjoyed it, and then I was at a for a very long point. All the sequels used to be the movies that sucked, and I would just pass on every sequel I saw. Yeah. And now I just pass on most sequels I see. <laughs> yeah. Um. No, I think. Uh. Yeah. It's it's on my list. So yeah, I agree. It's just. I don't know. Like I, I don't. I haven't seen a lot of buzz for this one, like Pro Ghost Protocol had. So I'm not sure. That's true. Honestly, I didn't even consider. Uh, didn't make mine. Oh really? Yeah. Interesting. Hmm. Yeah. I think that's a mistake. Yeah. I. Uh. It probably is. What's its release month? Actually, I didn't even have it as a contender. It must be July or August. I don't know. July. I think. What's What do you have for number five then? My number five entry is Inside Out. Okay. Because Pixar is still unstoppable. Minions, right. I think, has a distinct advantage for family movies coming out this summer. I've mentioned before in discussing Inside Out that I don't think the character design is as marketably appealing. Like when you compare the little emotion guys to a minion, minions win on merchandising hands down. Yeah. Also, minions are already on cereal boxes. Yeah. However, Pixar makes actually great movies, and I think people have grown to love them for that. Mm -hmm. So it's still going to draw huge crowds i'll probably go see it cry my eyes out okay well that's our top five yep so we will have number six through ten did i mention my was jurassic world real quick i don't know if you i said that. number five was mission impossible no no you your said five. your five is mission impossible five oh. mine's jurassic world i thought you said yours is also no five. Yeah, no oh. he said five just to be like what yeah. like we chose four as four yeah we're idiots but i don't think you'd be in on that yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay Jurassic World number five. Yes. I'm not going to argue with that. Right. Has that hit your list yet, Alex? I forget. You said three. Jurassic World was my number three. three yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, that all sounds good. 